Welcome to Economic Outlook. Now today we're going to discuss something that, if you've been to a financial website, watched your local news, or been to a gas station, you're undoubtedly going to be familiar with. And that's the recent rise in oil prices. Now there's a lot of media hysteria around this topic. And so what I want to do is give you an unbiased look at the information, tell you about why I think oil prices have been increasing, and then let you make your own decisions based on the data. To do that, we're going to start by going over a history of oil prices and discuss the recent rise relative to past oil shocks. After that, we'll talk about other commodities and basic supply and demand to see if those shed any light on what's been happening with oil. After that, we'll talk about other factors that may be impacting the price of oil, like currency, hedging, and inflation. Finally, in the next part of the discussion, we'll talk about how oil prices have impacted consumers. And that includes things like gasoline, electricity, and spending habits. So hopefully this will give you a look at oil prices, it'll give you a lot to think about, and most importantly, present you with the data you need to make your own decisions. Now, before we try to understand the most recent two years of oil prices, we need to look at some historical trends and get a sense for what oil was doing before this most recent run-up. Now, to do that, we're going to look at information from the Energy Information Administration. These are the official statistics that the Department of Energy releases to the U.S. government. Now, what I've done is create a mirror database of the Department of Energy's internal statistics, so all the numbers you see come directly from the EIA. There are a lot of other bodies around the world who have data on oil production. Ones that you would normally think of are OPEC, the IEA, and some other independent bodies. We're going to stick with the actual U.S. government data because it's the easiest to actually manipulate, but be aware that there are other statistics out there. So if you see something that doesn't quite match, be sure to check the sources because it's probably from the IEA or OPEC itself. The first chart we're going to look at shows us nominal oil prices. Now these are prices without adjustments for inflation. So let's see what was happening. Starting in the mid 80s, oil prices held pretty firm at around $20 until the late 90s where they dipped. And then after the September 11th attacks, they began their sort of slow progression upward, and then that progression rapidly increased in late 2006, 2007, and as we're seeing still in 2008. Next, we need to look at real oil prices. Now, these are different from nominal values because they're actually adjusted for inflation. The way I've done this is using CPI data. Now, the Consumer Price Index shows us how much inflation has occurred in a given year. What we do is adjust oil prices for changes in the CPI. So essentially, we can look at prices from the mid 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, all the way to today, and we can look at it in terms of May 2008 dollars. This is really important because the purchasing power of a dollar can increase or decrease, and we have to take that into account when we're looking at differences in price. So looking at real oil prices, the values from the mid 80s are actually even lower than they were when we looked at nominal values. Prices were around 10 to $15, and then they went through the same fluctuations and increases after September 11th and Hurricane Katrina. What's important to note here is that in the other nominal price chart, oil prices actually increased by around six times. But if you look at the real chart, the price of oil increased almost tenfold from the mid-90s. That's a substantially higher increase. And again, we have to use the CPI data to see something like this. Now, as you can see from the last two charts, oil and inflation are very closely intertwined. As inflation increases, oil prices increase. This makes logical sense, and we can look at it graphically as well. Here I've plotted the CPI and PPI numbers alongside the real price of oil per barrel. As you can see, as the CPI increases, so does the price of oil, and the producer price index is very closely tied to the real price of oil per barrel. That's probably because the producer price index measures the cost that it takes to actually produce goods, and oil is very common in a lot of production. So it makes sense that as oil prices increase, the CPI will increase as well. Now this is important because the price of oil per barrel is very highly correlated with the CPI. In fact, I did a statistical test, and the correlation coefficient is 0.91. The highest you can get is 1, and anything either at a high or low extreme, means that two things are very closely correlated. So oil and the CPI move very closely together. 
given the oil prices that we've seen, it makes sense that other commodities would probably increase as well. So let's investigate this a little bit. Let's see if other commodities have increased at the same rate as oil. One of the first things one thinks about is the price of gold. So if we look at this chart, we can see that, in fact, the price of gold has followed a pretty similar pattern to that of oil. And this makes sense because oil and gold are commonly used for some of the same purposes when it comes to hedging against inflation and making foreign currency bets. Another thing to look at, besides gold, are other fossil fuels that we use for energy. And two of the most common are coal and natural gas. So let's start by looking at natural gas. As you can see from this chart, the price of natural gas to industry, commercial, and residential users has increased in a pretty similar fashion to oil. In fact, you see some of the same peaks and valleys after the terrorist attacks and after Hurricane Katrina. So, some of the prices we've seen for other resources has also increased. If you look at this natural gas chart, you see that the order of magnitude is probably less than that of oil. In fact, the relative price increase has been maybe two or three times, whereas we saw oil increase up to ten times. There's been an even smaller increase for coal. The price of coal has doubled, and normally you would think that's a pretty substantial increase. But when you look at real dollar terms, the twofold increase of coal is still much smaller than that that we've seen with oil. So what do these other commodities tell us? Well, we've seen that oil increased almost 10 times in real dollar terms, but coal and natural gas haven't increased that much. We've still seen some pretty dramatic price increases. In fact, they've doubled or quadrupled, but it's still not the same as the level of magnitude we've seen with oil. We also saw pretty substantial increases in gold, and we've also seen increases in other commodities, like foods. For example, wheat and corn have, have increased in price a great deal over the past five years. However, they aren't completely comparable to oil, and here's the reason why. Oil is used for a lot of different things, but we pretty much know what we use oil for. Oil is oil. However, commodities like corn have actually changed in use. In the past, corn was just a food. It was something we ate. But now, corn is being used for ethanol. So when you have something really new come along, like ethanol, that puts a lot of increased demand on a resource, you see greater price fluctuations. That's just natural, and it makes sense. So there's a greater demand for corn, the usage has changed, and its price has changed accordingly. We've seen this great increase in oil prices, but there haven't really been any new uses for oil. Oil powers cars for gasoline, it's used to manufacture goods. So something has happened to increase oil, but it hasn't been something in terms of the use of oil. So let's look at the actual supply and demand for oil and figure out why the commodity has suddenly increased in price so much.